so yeah, so, hi, my name is Andre. And the work that I want to present today is, uh, in fact, the result of a joint collaboration uh, between the MOFAN team, uh, who are doing simulations, to which I belong at the Glasgow Computational Engineering Center at the University of Glasgow, and of the team uh, working on experimental uh, studies, also at the School of Engineering at the University of Glasgow. So, um, in the outline is the following. I'll uh, introduce these triboelectric nanogenerators and then uh, discuss the motivation for the current development. Uh, and then we'll switch to some of the details of the numerical framework that we proposed for this coupled problem uh, and uh, coupled of mechanics and electrostatics uh, before uh, going to the comparison uh, with the simulation results uh, and experimental data which our colleagues provided and then making some conclusions at the end. So what are those triboelectric nanogenerators? Uh, these are devices uh, used to convert mechanical energy into the electrical energy. And they have attracted uh, great attention in the last decades as being uh, autonomous sources of clean energy. And they can be used on very different scales, from miniature variable systems to harvesting the energy of the ocean waves. And uh, in particular, we will look into one type of those devices called contact separation, TNG. Uh, uh, they, their work is based on effect of contact electrification followed by electrostatic induction. So here I'm showing a schematic of this work. So uh, when we go from the initial stage to the contact stage, when we're uh, uh, bringing two uh, specifically chosen uh, 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 materials, uh, we, uh, they're brought into contact, uh, charges appear in the interface between the two materials. That's very known uh, effect known as triboelectrification. Uh, so those charges are equal in value and opposite in sign. Uh, and therefore, when while we keep the bodies in contact, uh, the charges are, uh, are practically on the same plane. And therefore, uh, uh, they um, uh, uh, compensate each other and no electric field is generated. And therefore, there is no uh, potential uh, difference between the two layers, between the two materials. However, if you go to the next stage, the separation, uh, then the charges will stay where they are uh, uh, when we bring uh, bodies out of contact. And now as they are separated, they create electric fields and uh, we can find the uh, uh, the uh, open circuit, so-called open circuit voltage between the layers. And then if we, if we bring this into a circuit, there would be current. So this is the main idea, and these are the stages that we will simulate, in particular the contact stage and separation stage. But first, what's the, what's the motivation for doing such simulations? The idea is that as the charges appear only in the real contact area, the surface roughness is very important for these problems. And uh, our colleagues have shown in experiments and with some analytical formulas, the dependence on the performance of these devices, depending on the applied load, for a given uh, uh, surface roughness. Since the more load we apply, the more uh, surfaces come in contact, the more charges appear, and therefore the more energy can be harvested. So optimization of this process and understanding is very important, but the numerical model accounting for surface roughness has not been proposed yet for these devices due to a number of difficulties. And therefore this is where we um, would want to contribute. And uh, so why to develop a finite element model? Uh, in the tribology, a very popular approach is the boundary element method, but it's only efficient for linear and elastic contact problems. Uh, uh, with the finite element method, we could uh, go further and develop a unified framework for uh, handling also nonlinear and coupled problems. But uh, uh, we probably cannot use uh, our commercial packages for such problem for a number of difficulties. First of all, how would you project the surface data on the mesh? Uh, it could be done, but uh, it, it, it needs certain development in the uh, available general commercial codes, and uh, that could be not very user-friendly. Furthermore, even if we could do that and run a simulation uh, with the commercial code, uh, which would provide some distribution of contact pressure, how to correctly get the real contact area, which is the, uh, the most essential parameter for the study that we want to do. And even if we get that, how to use the data about the real contact area in the electrostatics problem setup, taking into account the roughness. So therefore, we would uh, try to address uh, this problem, uh, developing a bespoke uh, module of the uh, FEM library, in particular of MOFEM, and, uh, and doing this open source, we believe that it will facilitate the collaboration and research dissemination in this very popular field. So the, 
the setup of the contact stage would follow uh, the uh, the setup which was done in the experiment of our collaborators. Uh, so this device consists has a, a, a consists of several layers and it has a sandwich structure. So there are two layers, two tribal layers that that generate the charges are the two polymers PET and PDMS. PDM, while this PDMS is a coating on another layer of PET. So uh, for the simulation, we would consider a representative element of such device. Uh, and uh, we have the surface roughness measurements for the uh, PET surface and PDMS surface, a, a number of those from different zones. And we could simplify our problem by uh, considering uh, uh, the equivalent uh, surface roughness from the two surfaces, which would then be projected on the, on the mesh. And then the, the contact with the rigid uh, flat uh, can be solved. And uh, this is a known procedure, and uh, 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 it is valid under assumptions of small strains and uh, small slopes of the uh, of the surface roughness, which are reasonable for the problem under study. And furthermore, we could use the uh, effective elastic properties uh, from these two uh, uh, materials. So the statement of the contact problem is pretty standard, where we, we use here the unilateral contact constraints. And uh, to solve a such problem, we would formulate uh, uh, the weak form uh, in the form of the saddle point problem. And uh, here, the uh, state of the art methods for resolving such problem uh, for contact uh, use the stabilization parameter. Uh, for example, the augmented Lagrangian method uh, is using stabilization parameter to improve the conversions. I'm mentioning this because it would be important for the next slides. And uh, it's straightforward that the displacement field is continuous, but which field to choose for Lagrange multipliers? And we found out that the choice of the field of Lagrange multipliers has implications on the computation of the contact area. So which space for Lagrange multipliers to choose? Uh, the, the, the easiest way is to use the continuous functions, the same as for the displacement. That's the most popular approach. And to test this, uh, we could consider just a simple 2D problem uh, of a wavy surface coming in contact with the rigid flat. Uh, it has an analytical solution, and we can compare the profile of the contact pressure with the analytical solution. It coincides very well, except for the neighborhood of the edge uh, of the boundary between contact and non-contact zones. And uh, those oscillations are um, uh, uh, cannot be diminished easily. And furthermore, if we, if we look into what's happening at the very edge of the contact zone, there are some oscillations propagating. Uh, and uh, those oscillations make uh, ambiguous computation of what is the real contact area, because we have them in the zones where there should be no contact. And furthermore, those oscillations depend on the stabilization parameter epsilon, which is a nightmare and shouldn't be the case. So a better choice to, to, to resolve this issue would to use a dual space as proposed in the works of Pop and Walmart. Uh, the dual space, uh, it comes from the following idea. So the, the um, the space H1 for displacement uh, has a trace in H1 over 2 on the boundary, and then the natural dual space for that H1 over 2 is denoted as H minus 1 over 2. And in this work, it, ha it has been shown how to construct uh, the space. So this would work, but there is one problem with this approach, is that uh, uh, such construction is very difficult for arbitrary order shape functions. And uh, since we're developing contact, not particularly for this problem, but as a general model, uh, which would handle very different applications, we would want to construct contact using hierarch hierarchical shape functions. And therefore, we proposed uh, something new and more general, is to use the uh, approximation of uh, contact uh, uh, Lagrange multipliers through the space HD. So space HD is a natural space for stresses in the volume, and therefore we will consider this approximation in the elements uh, which are uh, adjacent to the contact surface. And then the trace of such field would give us the, uh, the uh, elements, the functions from the natural space for the pressure on the surface. Uh, I unfortunately, I don't have time to go into detail uh, about this idea. Uh, probably we'll have another chance to present that uh, next time. But uh, the results show that uh, the, the, the oscillations are non-existent in this case. Uh, the, the blue curve here corresponds to the novel formulation. And if you look into what's happening at the boundary between contact and non-contact, we see that uh, the, uh, the oscillations are not present at all. And the difference between the analytical and the uh, numerical simulation with this new formulation is limited to the uh, to the uh, to less than one element. So uh, by decreasing the element size here, we would always improve the computation of the contact area. So to test this, we considered uh, a case of the random surface roughness generated uh, uh, with the uh, with the uh, uh, the uh, uh, code 
presented in this journal. And uh, uh, for, uh, for the case of the periodic uh, random roughness, we could compare the results with the boundary element method. Uh, uh, so what I did here is studied how the real contact area uh, fraction uh, increases with the external load. And here the uh, black dash curve is the uh, curve obtained with the boundary element method corrected as was suggested in the paper presented here. And therefore there is some confidence with that result. So with the uh, H1 contact fibrillation, the, the standard one with the continuous interpolation of the Lagrange multipliers, we see something uh, uh, not, not nice, that uh, the, the results are quite varying for different uh, values of the augmentation parameter, which should not affect the results, in fact, uh, for, for a reasonable range of values. And uh, they are like, all over the place compared to the, uh, to the reference solution, and uh, no convergence is obtained, uh, is observed, and therefore there is no way how to choose this parameter. So uh, those results are not, uh, not confident enough. If we plot the same uh, plot for, the, uh, for our novel contact formulation, we observe that uh, the, the, those curves converge very fast uh, with the decreasing epsilon, and, uh, 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 and the, the, the master curve to which they uh, uh, um, converge is very close to the reference one. And therefore, now we know how to choose the proper value of the stabilization parameter, which is reasonable for good convergence and also given us confidence in computational contact area. Uh, therefore, uh, 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 we could use the surface measurements provided by our colleagues, and uh, uh, we could see how the, the evolution of the uh, contact pressure and the contact area is happening for the, uh, the given surface roughness profile. And that, uh, th th those maps of the contact and non-contact zones gives us the input for the uh, second stage, the separation stage, where we consider layers of the electric separated by air. So this knowledge of where the contact uh, is happening and where it's not uh, tells us about how the tribal charges are distributed in the interfaces between the uh, different layers and, and air gap. And here we use, uh, for, for the zones where charges are present, we use the constant value of the uh, charge density. However, uh, I would mention in a second that th th this value is quite ambiguous and we would uh, looking into assessing the validity of uh, this measurement, which was done in the, some previous experiments by other groups. So the statement of electrostatics problem is also uh, quite standard. Here, uh, with, uh, I just want to mention those two lines. Uh, these are uh, the ones where we define the um, interface uh, conditions, uh, where the, the jump is governed by the, uh, the distribution of the charges at the interface between the uh, top the electric and air, and the bottom the electric and air. And then the open circuit voltage is computed as the difference in potentials between the very top and very bottom of this computational mesh. And this can be uh, compared with the experimental values. So uh, I, I will finish with just showing some uh, comparison with the uh, experiment that our colleagues uh, have uh, performed. Uh, there will be two series of studies here. So the first one will concentrate on uh, uh, changing uh, the load in the contact stage, so considering different loads, uh, therefore different values of the real contact area. And then for the separation stage, we will uh, consider only one value of the air gap. So in this case, we could com compare our results, uh, the, 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 the blue one here, with some uh, intercontinental range uh, accounting for the uh, uh, statistics of the several uh, 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 surface realizations considered. And uh, here our results are in, I would say, the same qualitative agreement with the experiment as the uh, approximate formula uh, proposed by our, our co-authors. However, what we realized is that the experimental results here correspond to a very limited range of loads. In fact, we could continue loading m much further and realize that the experiment corresponds to very, to the very beginning of it, while uh, uh, we could go much further with the numerical simulation until the saturation of the interface. And therefore, our colleagues are currently working now on the making experiments in the wide range of loads to assess uh, the validity of the simulation compared to the approximation, because there is a considerable difference between the two. And so uh, the, the, the second uh, uh, set of studies are for uh, varying separation. So here we just apply one value of the load, uh, compute the contact area uh, for, for this load, and then try different separations uh, between the, the electrics. Here the experiment is proposed by another group, and uh, 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 the uh, analytical formula proposed by our colleagues is uh, in some 
uh, qualitative agreement with the experiment. Uh, so the idea here is that uh, one would observe saturation of the uh, um, uh, of the uh, open circuit voltage, and the numerical simulation is not showing that because uh, we don't take into account the edge effects. So we believe that uh, the, the the best result we could obtain is uh, if we uh, for for the largest separations, if we combine the computational very cont contact area in which we are confident with the predictions for analytical formula. And with this, uh, I would like to conclude saying that we uh, proposed, uh, 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 yeah, uh, we proposed uh, the, the, the novel framework, which uh, which permits to simulate TNG behavior uh, for, uh, yeah, uh, for the um, uh, surface roughness taken into account and with, uh, using the direct measurements. And currently we are working on extending uh, this to a wider range of loads and experiments and also the combining experimental numerical approaches to assess the uh, surface tribal charge density, which is an important value. And finally, we would extend this numerical framework uh, to consider nonlinear material behaviors and inclusions in tribal layers, which would facilitate the design of the new TNG, which are very promising applications uh, as an energy harvesters for the future. And uh, the developed framework is available as a part of the Morphin Tribology model uh, on this link. Thank you for the attention. Thank you very much for this very noble work. Absolutely.